Over a decade ago, Nissan established itself as an EV player with the first mass-produced battery electric vehicle to be offered to US consumers with the original Nissan LEAF. Now, the LEAF has been quite a huge success for Nissan. The company has sold over 600,000 units worldwide since then. About 175,000 are here in the US. However, this week, I'm actually out here just outside of Nashville, Tennessee to drive the next chapter in Nissan's electric vehicle strategy. This is the 2023 Nissan Aria, the first fully dedicated long-range battery electric SUV in their portfolio and with over 300 miles of range on a full charge and available dual motor all-wheel drive it has all the necessary stats to compete head-on with new competitors from Tesla and of course from other entries uh, like the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Volkswagen ID4. So if you guys have been in the market for an all-electric SUV and you wanted something that was within the Nissan portfolio how does the 2023 Nissan Aria stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of the new Aria, I wanna show you guys what's the million dollar question with every EV. Does this car have a frunk? Sadly, as you can see, it does not. But since we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs. Now you can see under the hood here, Nissan had to package a lot of the climate control functions underneath here along with the powertrain. As you can see, there's the motor for the front, uh, for the front motor along with the uh, orange cable. It almost just looks like a conventional gas hybrid vehicle. Uh, they wanted to give us more space on the interior, which is why it doesn't have a frunk. But this model here is the single motor version. Nissan will offer a single motor front wheel drive or a dual motor all wheel drive that they call E-Force. Um, the E-Force versions will come uh, in early 2023. So right now I can only drive the front wheel drive version. It basically has a front motor making 238 horsepower at the front wheels and 221 pound feet of torque. You have your choice between two different battery sizes, a standard range battery pack delivering 63 miles of usable range, 66 total, uh, or this extended range battery pack that delivers up to 87 miles of usable capacity, or I'm sorry, 87 kilowatts of usable capacity, 91 kilowatts is the actual total capacity. Um, the extra large battery is about a $4,000 upcharge and it gives you up to 304 miles of range if you guys go for uh, the, the more efficient trim level. Now this model here, the Empower Plus, delivers around 289 miles of range uh, and uh, it all goes out through a one speed reduction gear transmission. Uh, Nissan says the front wheel drive version should get to 60 in roughly 7.1 seconds. Um, this model here is not rated to tow anything. However, the all wheel drive version may fix that. We don't know for sure just yet. Um, as this vehicle sits, it weighs in at just over 4,600 pounds, which again is heavy, but it is a little bit lighter versus some of its competitors. Now I wanna come over here really quick and talk about charging because the charge port door is over here on the front fender on the passenger side. And you can see, unlike the uh, Leaf, which uses the older Chatamo style plug and it maxed out at 100 kilowatts, the new Aria uses the CCS newer plug. So CCS combo, which means it has an onboard charger uh, of 7.2 kilowatts. So if you want a level two charge this vehicle, it'll take roughly 14 hours. That is pretty slow. Most other competitors like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6 and so forth, they have a uh, much faster 11 kilowatt onshore chargers. And then GM on the Lyric offers like a 19 kilowatt onboard charger. So that's pretty slow. When you have it connected to a DC fast charger, this will accept up to 130 kilowatts of max power, which means you can go from 20 to 80% in roughly 40 minutes for this larger battery pack, 35 minutes if you guys have the smaller standard range battery pack. So in terms of charging, the Aria is slightly behind its competitors, uh, but in terms of range, it's right up there with most of its rivals. But closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the styling of this model. Now you can see Nissan you wanted to use a design philosophy that they call uh, timeless Japanese futurism, uh, whatever that means. But as you can see, it's very it's a very distinctive looking design, uh, very much in the Nissan family. Almost has styling cues from like cars like the Murano, for example. You have the signature corporate Nissan V Motion grille at the front. In fact, the headlights of this vehicle are very slim, and I also love how the daytime running light and turn signal kind of goes down into the v-motion grille love the full led headlight in here as well 
where it has almost four individual light clusters. You also have an illuminated Nissan logo here. This is their new logo. I think this might be the first Nissan that I'm seeing with the illuminated logo. As you can see, the grill is not actually open because you don't require it when you have an EV. You do have some active grill shutters down here at the lower fascia. And then unlike most EVs, you do have LED fog lights here, which is definitely nice. A functional air vent here that creates an air curtain over the wheels to again aid with aerodynamics. But overall, as we look at the side profile of this car, you can see it definitely has a more crossover like look to it. In fact, it has roughly 6.3 inches of ground clearance. So you're not gonna be doing off-roading with a vehicle like this, but uh, it is higher up versus the Leaf. And the Aria's proportions are a little bit deceiving because on the outside, it's about 183 inches long overall. So it's the same size as a Rogue on the outside uh, the wheelbase is 109 inches long, so it's a little bit longer than the Rogue, but shorter than cars like the Mustang Mach-E or the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or Kia EV6. Nissan says because of that skateboard architecture that basically uh, it's a dedicated EV platform, they were able to maximize the interior space. So it's got the interior space of a Murano, but the footprint of a Rogue, which is something that a lot of consumers again are gonna really like. Now here are the wheels. You can see Aria's, all of them come with a 19 inch wheel uh, wrapped in a 235-55 R19 tire. You can get a 20 inch wheel when you go for the fully loaded Platinum Plus trim, but that's gonna drop the range to around 240 miles, 265 for all wheel drive versions or 270. You can see there's an aero cover on the wheels. These are a really unattractive wheel in my eyes, but again, wheel designs and styling is all very subjective. You can see like a lot of other crossovers, you have these black painted fender flares um, that uh, some of you may or may not like. But overall, the proportions are slippery. This car has roughly a 0 0.30 coefficient of drag, so it's not quite as slippery as the Leaf, um, but uh, you can see it is a, a well-proportioned car from the side for me. Now, uh, looking at this side profile, you can see the mirrors here are black painted, but they don't have an integrated turn signal. There's this uh, silver trim that goes along the entire window line. And then you can see my tester also has a two-tone black roof with a panoramic sunroof that's included on this higher trim. Surprised to see that the back window here is not tinted. Uh, this is a very early pre-production car. I'll have to find that from Nissan if this, uh, the later models will have a uh, tinted back windows like other crossovers. And then looking at the rear, you can see very interesting, unique design. It almost has kind of like the silhouette of a Murano for me. Uh, the taillights, you can see very distinctive, full LED light bar that goes across the entire rear hatch. Nissan is spelled out at the back. I haven't seen that before. And then you can see there's an Aria badge with the Empower badge, you have LED turn signals, LED brake lights, LED reverse lights. Down here, you can see obviously no exhaust tips. The rear bumper has these nicely integrated parking sensors uh, and it has a black painted area down in the rear diffuser. Now looking at the trunk, you can see uh, this trunk capacity is pretty uh, usable for the size of the vehicle. You get just under 23 cubic feet of space. If you fold down the second row seats, it expands it out uh, to around 59 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good. Uh, and then like so many other Nissan products, there is this kind of storage compartment here that they call divide and hide. Uh, you can see, you can kind of adjust the way this is. You can also store things underneath this false floor. And then down here, underneath here, there is no spare tire. Instead, you just have a fix-a-flat kit but it looks like there could be room to actually put a spare tire down there. So that's something to keep in mind. But I really like, I think a lot of people are gonna like this kind of floor that is adjustable, but overall the trunk capacity uh, is very usable and it does have significantly more versus the Leaf. So the exterior of the Aria definitely looks pretty distinctive, but let's go ahead and move on to the inside of this particular model here. The first thing I do wanna show you guys, however, check this out guys. Nissan finally put a new key fob on the Aria uh, and I love this new fob. It's got the usual unlock, lock, panic, and then trunk release. Uh, and this key, it looks like a really nice evolution of the original key, the original smart key, but I just love the fact that Nissan went to that extra mile and gave us a new key fob for the new Aria. Now, unlike some competitors that have really interesting pop-out door handles, Nissan went with a very conventional look for the door handles. You can see there's a touch sensor there that locks the door. And then if you wanna unlock it, just touch the back of the handle and it pops out like every other traditional car. Now, I really like the color combination of my tester with the dark blue exterior, this kind of beige macchiato leather. These seats, you can see they're a two-tone combination of synthetic leather, a leather material, and this kind of synthetic suede material. These are an eight-way power driver's seat with four-way power lumbar support with two-person memory seats, which is definitely nice. Heated seats, however, they're three-way heated seats, three-level, but no ventilated seats. Nissan does not offer cooled seats on the Aria, sadly. The door panel, you can see, Soft touch injection molded plastic, leather stitching over here, real stitching, leather padded for the armrest right here, silver accented door handle, really high quality window controls with piano black plastic. This is a new design, a new switch gear, uh, and you can see they're also illuminated 
Uh, and down here, you can see it's hard touch plastic. The Kamiki, Kamiki inspired design here for the speaker covers. This is also illuminated. They call it and on lighting. It all makes for a really interesting uh, modern cabin. Nissan was going for like a lounge like feel. And I think they certainly achieved that. Uh, with a new Aria, that's pretty nice. The windows I also meant, forgot to mention are one touch up and down for all four, so that's really great. Now getting in, this has 6.3 inches of ground clearance, so it has a pretty easy step in height. And then as I get in and shut the door, the door has a really solid sounding thunk, so that's really nice as well. Now uh, you can see there's a power button right here where you'd expect it to be. Push that button. And you can see the car comes to life. It's got two 12 inch displays here, uh, which look fantastic. It's their newest Nissan Connect head unit here. You've got a 12 inch display here and a 12 inch display here. These are two separate ones. There's two separate touch sensitive buttons over here between the two displays. And you can see there are a, con a convex and a concave display. So it looks really interesting when you look at it from above, but overall it really uh, gives you that sense that you're sitting in a very modern futuristic car. I also love how the soft materials kind of carry over onto the dash where you have genuine stitching over here. Hard touch plastic over here, but this is nice and padded. You're never gonna touch that area. Most Arias will have a heads up display like this particular one here, which shows you your turn by turn GPS directions. You can see over here, there's a digital camera rear view mirror, which is a really cool square design, which you can turn off if you guys don't want that. You can also adjust the settings of that, the brightness, the positioning and whatnot. This Nissan Connect head unit you can see includes wireless Apple CarPlay. You can see my phone's already connected. It's very quick and snappy and easy to use. However, if you wanna use Android Auto, you actually have to connect it to a wire. It's not wired Android Auto connection, but wireless Apple CarPlay. This is also the first Nissan to include over the air updates. So again, they're really flexing their tech muscles here. This is their all electric dedicated EV. So that doesn't surprise me here. This system works fine. Uh, it's relatively quick and snappy and easy to use. There's the factory GPS. You can see sometimes it's a little bit slow. I'll have to wait until I spend a little bit more time with the system here. Uh, and if you want to access things like the heated seats, you have to go into the screen here and you can also just touch that right there. You can do an automatic setting or you can just touch that. You can see there's three different levels. So that's going to be a little bit annoying for those of you who would prefer hard buttons. The seat controls, as you can see, are over here in the actual screen. You can see it's a little bit slow at times. You can also adjust the climate here. Uh, and then another thing that's nice is there's a volume knob here, a seek and a track or a skip button right there along with your hazard. I love the bronze uh, material Material, the bronze coloring that you see going across the dashboard here, accenting the dash vents. And then this right here is a really interesting fake wood panel, although it looks and feels real. Nissan told me that this is a fake material, but you can see you have touch sensitive controls here, which are capacitive. So if I touch this, it gives you haptic feedback. Um, it, it is a little finicky to use at times, but I imagine once you get used to it, it works fine but it just looks really great. It also carries over over here onto the center console, which you can see you can adjust your drive mode selector here. There's three different modes, sport, standard, and eco. Uh, you have your automatic parallel parking function, which this vehicle also now has the ability to parallel park and perpendicular park itself and back up park into the vehicle for you or into a space for you. E-Step is their uh, one pedal drive or their um, regen braking, which this vehicle offers some form of a one pedal drive, but not true one pedal driving. And then this over here, you can see that's your wireless phone charging indicator. My phone is charging right there uh, for the wireless charging pad. If I remove my phone, that actually will not illuminate anymore. So again, that's how you know that it's actually um, charging your phone. This open and close button here is pretty cool. If I push the open button, you can see that little panel pops down and it reveals pretty good storage, actually. You can put your phone here. It's also pretty sturdy feeling. This is nice, deep. You can store things, you can hide things in there. Uh, and you can also kind of close this and you can just leave it in certain positions. So if you don't want to part, if you want to have it partially open or partially closed, Nissan kind of gives you that option. The company says that the only way you're going to open this is by pushing this button. Don't try to open it manually because you'll probably break it. And they said it's also pretty sturdy. You probably are going to need a crowbar to actually open that. Uh, down there, you can see more of that and on uh, ambient lighting with the Kamiki design pattern there. This is again, the reason why the car doesn't have a frunk because they wanted to give us this open space down here uh, to make the cabin feel a little bit more open and airy. There's a button right here that allows me to move the center console all the way back, which is pretty slick. I love how it's power actuated. Uh, when I move it all the way back, you can see there's two USB charging ports here, right? an A and a C. Uh, and you can see there's also a nice little area where you can put your smartphone. You can also wind up cords here. There's a 12 volt power outlet. And then you can see with this all the way back, I can still utilize this as a center console, but it's also 
pretty far back. So this is really cool how they kind of give you this adjustability. I also like the sturdy cup holder lid here that has kind of like that matching fake wood. The only thing I don't like about this center console is it's very shallow. Uh, because of the way this is designed, how this moves forward and back, it just has enough for my phone. And then you can put a couple of small things here. But for those of you who wanted like a really deep center console storage area, uh, the car is kind of lacking that. So you're going to be, you know, using the space down here slightly. And then this open space here, I think could have been utilized a little bit better because you can't really put a person over here, but they could have put some additional storage over here uh, for some other items here, like perhaps like for a tablet, a smartphone, a purse or something like that. Uh, opening up the glove box, you can see um, this is relatively deep. It's also damped and signed uh, with felt, which is pretty nice. And then overall, you can see here the uh, upper portion uh, of the roof area. You can see it's covered with a woven material. I like the ambient or LED lighting over here. And then unlike some other EVs, you can see this car does have a power retractable shade. So you can close this up if you guys don't want the sun beating down on you. And then uh, Nissan also allows you the ability to actually open up the sunroof. So that's something you can't get on most EVs. Uh, you can also actually open it up even larger there. It only goes over the front seats. Uh, but for those of you who want a sunroof that actually opens in your electric vehicle, the Aria is one of the few vehicles. I believe the Kia EV6 is the other vehicle that allows you to do that. So overall, the cabin has that open and airy feel, very comfortable NASA inspired zero gravity seats, lots of impressive tech um, and a really nice heads up display, really nice steering wheel. I'm liking this interior a lot. I think I actually might prefer this interior versus something like the Volkswagen ID4 or the Subaru Solterra and the Toyota BZ4X. Let's move on to the back seat of the 2023 Aria. You can see because of that longer wheelbase, we do have a generous uh, second row here. There is no third row available on this vehicle, but Nissan says there's around 37 inches of legroom. That's roughly uh, five more inches versus what you're going to find in the Nissan Leaf. And this is on par with most of its competitors, although the number actually suggests that it's less than something like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. But I'd say that with that completely flat floor, uh, you can see more of that beige leatherette material. This seat back actually does allow you to kind of recline it slightly uh, in addition to obviously folding it down as well, which is nice. Uh, but uh, you can't actually move the seat forward and back. In terms of the door panel material, you can see it's soft touch plastic back here, which is nice. More of that leather stitching uh, padded area over here, uh, along with that interesting Kamiki design for the speaker covers uh, and whatnot. Uh, but getting back here, you can see the space is very, very generous. I really like this actually. It feels roomy. Shut the door. It has that same solid sounding thunk. I even love how the leather continues on from this area here, this is even soft touch right here. So that's very, very unexpected. Uh, you have this really cool kind of almost like your jeans. You can see the material back here is a, a recycled material, I believe. And it's also textured to look like your jeans. You have two storage pockets. You have rear seat air vents back here, two USB charging ports. And then you also have heated back seats. Like I mentioned earlier, completely flat floor. And then there's also an armrest here that folds down and gives you two cup holders. The sunroof, like I said earlier, it comes all the way to the back here. This doesn't open, but uh, for those of you who need a back seat that's generous for full-size adults, the Aria definitely is gonna deliver that and it has among the most spacious back seats in the segment. And it has some of the nicest materials and some really great tech as well. All right, so starting off the drive in the 2023 Nissan Aria. Now I am driving the front wheel drive version. So it has a single motor on the front axle deliver delivering around 238 horsepower. Nissan says you should get to 60 in roughly 7.2 seconds. I got 7.09 in that first run there. Keep in mind, this is a very, very early first drive. I have about a 92% state of charge on the battery pack. The all-wheel drive model, for those of you who want something a little bit quicker, should do that deed in about uh, under five seconds, which is, which is probably a little bit more, you know, for something that uh, enthusiasts are going to be looking for. But just like every other EV out there, the power is instantaneous. Uh, once you get the vehicle going, you put your foot down, it just kind of has that instant torque. I mean, 221 pound-feet of torque is a beautiful thing. Uh, and this vehicle, it feels sufficiently quick, I will say. Um, it's pretty comparable to the Volkswagen ID4, the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra. Remember the Aria is not designed to be uh, a true Tesla fighter in the sense of performance. Nissan really prioritized comfort, build quality technology with this car. And it kind of definitely shows a little bit. Um, just want to see here what I can get this time.
put my foot down there. It really starts to deliver full power above 40 miles an hour. There we go, 7.17 seconds there. So pretty consistently around 7.1, that one was closer to 7.2 seconds. So a decent acceleration, but it's not gonna blow your mind away. But for those of you who are kind of coming from a gas powered vehicle to an EV, you're gonna get into this and be really surprised at how smooth, how quiet it is, how instantaneous the power is like that is going to be like the turning point for a lot of consumers who are who've never driven an electric vehicle who are moving to are, are moving from a gas vehicle never driven an ev um this car feels uh really premium and that's the one thing that the leaf never really had it always felt like an economy car that was turned into an electric vehicle but this has really good ride quality it's got good handling good steering feel uh, it's a dedicated ev platform we've got a four-wheel independent suspension uh, and uh, the visibility in here is also pretty good. I mean, it it's kind of shaped a little bit like a van, so that's what it feels like I'm driving right now with the dash being so far. But I have good sight lines, good view out of the front, the sides, the back, you have that digital camera review mirror, which I like, um, and the regen braking. This car has something they call E-Step, and you also have a B mode in the transmission selector. It's a one speed reduction gear. and it. It doesn't deliver full one pedal drive, but it's pretty darn close. It doesn't bring you to a full stop. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but it's nice that it's there and it's nice that Nissan, you know, is giving you that option. You can turn it off if you'd like, if you don't like, you know, that kind of uh, driving feel for those of you who aren't used to it. But what shocks me though, is how quiet this car is. It's really quiet. It doesn't feel terribly heavy, but it also doesn't feel terribly sporty either. It just feels comfortable, smooth, uh, kind of lacking in annoyances. Uh, and it definitely feels like it's really well made. And that's something that the Leaf never really felt to me. It always felt like, again, an economy car uh, gone electric. But let me get this vehicle out on the highway because Nissan actually uh, upgraded significantly their ProPilot Assist. It's now in their 2.0 system, which allows for true hands-free driving. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what this car is like out on the interstate. So here we are out on the interstate, on Interstate 65 South, heading toward Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, and this is where I'm getting a, a chance to test out Nissan's ProPilot Assist 2.0. Now, uh, this is Nissan's first hands-free driver assist system, and it's kind of their version of uh, Ford's Blue Cruise and GM's Super Cruise. And the system is basically in its third generation almost. It's an evolution of their ProPilot Assist that they introduced back in 2018. Uh, to activate it, uh, the vehicle is, it's pretty simple. There's a blue button here on the steering wheel. You push that button, that turns it on, and then you hit the set icon. Now there's three different color lights that this vehicle, that the system uses to talk to you. White light basically means that uh, the system is on. Uh, the green, when it turns green, means that the steering assist is active. So that's kind of uh, the system with NaviLink that they introduced on the Rogue back in 2021. Now the system is showing a blue color in the instrument panel. And then at night, there's also a blue light that kind of surrounds you in the entire dash. I won't be able to show that to you here on this first drive, but this is where you know the system is allowing me to drive hands-free. Uh, and it's only when certain conditions are met. Nissan says they use pre-map, um, our interstates across the US, over 200,000 uh, miles of roads. And then it also has a camera right here on the steering wheel or on the base of the steering column that watches my face. Wants to make sure that I'm paying attention. This vehicle also has uh, lane change assist functions. So right now I have the system on, it's set to 75 miles an hour. And as you can see, it stays the, or keeps the vehicle centered in the lane. It's using the, the cameras around the vehicle. It's using the sensors around the vehicle and it's using the pre-mapped uh, data that it has and you can see here we're going to follow around this curve it actually does a pretty good job this is my first time trying out nissan's pilot assist 2.0 and i have to say right off the bat i'm noticing it works better than ford's blue cruise system um, now the one thing i hated about blue cruise is it always would shut itself off and then it would just slow or it would softly tell me to put my hands back on the wheel this system however it's just staying blue uh, as you can see i've been driving hands-free the entire time as i've been filming this little segment here um, but the beauty about the Aria, now that we're here on the interstate, is this is a really excellent highway cruising vehicle. Nissan claims it's one of the quietest cars, or it is the quietest car in its specific segment. And I have to say, at 75 miles an hour, it, it rides really well. It's very comfortable. The visibility is good. These zero gravity seats are, are really supportive and cushy as well. And um, it does a really good job of staying in the lane for me, which I really like. Now let's go ahead and signal here now when i signal right to change lanes here uh, the system actually wants me to put my hands back on the wheel 
uh, when I want to initiate a lane change. You can see now it's green because it's not quite active yet. Uh, this is basically telling me it's hands on for now, even though it's showing green. It's when it turns blue that allows you to do hands off. And then you can hear it's beeping there because that uh, big truck was kind of cutting it close into my lane. So I was kind of shoving myself over a little bit, hugging the lane marker. Um, but when you do want to do active lane changes, some competitor vehicles like Super Cruise will automatically do the lane change without having to put your hands on the wheel. Nissan, however, requires you to put your hands back on the wheel. Uh, it's still changing lanes, but the system has a torque sensor and haptic sensor, just and it wants you to put your hands back on the wheel when it's doing a lane change, just to let the system know that you're still alert, you're still paying attention. So overall, as a highway car, if you're looking to purchase the Aria, really great highway car, and it's also a really uh, comfortable car, and it's got really great driver assistance tech. So clearly it is a really nice high driving vehicle out on the highway. Uh, around town it's really nice to drive. Honestly, I'm finding you know, very little things to complain about this car other than the fact that it charges a little bit slow and it's not as quick as I'd like it to be. But for those of you who have been waiting a long time for Nissan to do a full dedicated EV, the Aria may have just been worth the wait, but I'm really excited to drive the all-wheel drive models uh, later uh, next year. Now, because Nissan was the first manufacturer in America to really mass produce a battery electric vehicle, there are some pretty big shoes to fill, of course, with the Aria. And we have had to face delays with this vehicle because of the supply chain issues. But now that the Aria is finally here after spending the day driving this vehicle, was it worth the wait? Now, I have to say, Nissan is playing catch up here because the Leaf is kind of a more economy car focused electric vehicle that's going to be far less expensive. This is a premium, fully dedicated EV that the company has needed for quite Quite a few years now and it competes head-on with cars like the Volkswagen ID4, the Subaru Solterra, the Toyota BZ4X, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, uh, the Tesla Model Y. There are a lot of competitors in this space and the Aria certainly has the right stats to kind of compete with those vehicles. It's I think well priced, I think it's a well-sized vehicle, the interior is really well put together, it also drives extremely well and with up to 304 miles of range it also has the capacity that it needs uh, for many Americans because remember the longest range Leaf goes around 200 126 miles on a full charge so it's something that Nissan does extremely well with the Aria. Now speaking of which if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle they are heading to dealer showrooms in the fall so uh, basically any day now they should be showing at dealer lots. If you guys want all-wheel drive you're gonna have to wait until early 2023 and these vehicles will start at around 43,190 for the base version with the smaller battery pack which gives you around 216 miles of range. If you guys want the plus trim which gives you the larger battery pack and up to 304 miles miles of range it's about four thousand dollars extra if you want all-wheel drive it's about four thousand dollars extra this model here is the empower plus which means it has the longer range battery pack but it is a single motor version uh, I will be driving the all-wheel drive versions sometime in early next year. The Empower Plus gives you a couple of niceties like the upgraded interior, upgraded sound system, the panoramic sunroof, uh, the 360 camera. Those are all features that most of you probably want. This one here comes in at around $53,500 uh, plus destination. So again, uh, well priced, although keep in mind if you guys want the all-wheel drive Platinum Plus, the most expensive trim, those can be a little over $60,000, which makes it more expensive than something like a Mustang Mach-E and a Volkswagen ID4 or a Subaru Solterra or a Toyota BZ4X. And also keep in mind that the Aria is, unlike the Leaf, not built in Tennessee. This is actually built in Japan at one of their manufacturing facilities, so it sadly will not qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit come time in January. So that's something to keep in mind. Nissan is looking into moving production of this vehicle uh, sometime in the future, but of course that's gonna depend on certain conditions. They have not confirmed that, but they have said that they are looking into it. But for now, these vehicles are only gonna be built in Japan. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Nissan Aria. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.